Don't Commit Secrets is pretty uncontroversial, but I think it's missing something. A better rule is Don't Commit Unencrypted Secrets. SOPS is a tool that takes a configuration file like this one and encrypts the values using cloud-based key services. It then takes this YAML file, decrypts the data in memory, and passes the decrypted content to other processes without them ever touching the disk. Since the secrets are encrypted, we can safely commit them to our repository and even diff the changes in clear text while keeping the committed file encrypted. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into SOPS in two parts. In part one, we'll look at the day-to-day -day workflow using SOPS, and in part two, we'll look at advanced use cases such as key groups and auditing. If you want to skip ahead to any topic, you'll find links in the description, and if you found any part of this video useful, please consider leaving an offering upon the altar of the algorithm by liking, sharing, commenting, or subscribing. Any one of those really helps the channel grow. We'll set up a Docker-based test environment based on BusyBox and copy our application file into the current directory. We'll create this application script shortly. We'll set up the Trusted Certificate Authority certificates, without which we won't be able to make HTTP requests. Next, we'll download the SOPS binary from the project's releases on GitHub and make it executable. Finally, we'll run our application script as the container's entry point, which prints the SOPS version without checking for new versions on GitHub. We'll build the image and run a container to see the expected version. We'll encrypt this database config file with an AWS KMS key. The output has clear text keys with encrypted values and a new section containing metadata used by SOPS. Never edit this bit by hand, leave SOPS to manage it itself. As well as YAML, SOPS supports JSON, any and .n file formats. It also supports binary formatted files such as Java, JKS and Mac plist files. We'll be sticking with YAML throughout this video. Before moving on, we'll quickly get acquainted with the SOPS section of this file. The first node beneath our SOPS node is KMS because we used an AWS KMS key to encrypt this file. SOPS also works with Azure Key Vault, GCP KMS, HashiCorp Vault, PGP and AGE. We'll be using AWS KMS throughout this video. You can find details on how to work with the other key services on the SOPS README on GitHub. Regardless of the key service we use, there is always an ENC field. This is the encrypted data key used to encrypt the values in our file, generated when the file is first encrypted. The key is then encrypted with the master key from our chosen key service. If we had multiple KMS keys in this sequence, each would have an encrypted copy of the same data key and SOPS would try each master key in turn until it found one that worked. This is a way of adding redundancy to our encryption, so if one key service is unavailable, there is a backup. The last modified field refers to the last time the encrypted file was modified, and version is the version of SOPS used to generate the file. The MAC field is the message authentication code, and is the result of a calculation where every value in the file is given as an input. When the file is encrypted, this field is calculated and stored. When the file is decrypted, it is calculated again and compared to the stored version. If they are different, it means the file has been edited outside of SOPS, possibly by a bad actor. SOPS will display an error and fail to decrypt the file. The unencrypted suffix defines the text we can add to the end of a key to tell SOPS to leave it unencrypted. We'll look at this in detail later in the video. Now we have our file with encrypted values, we can use one of two commands to decrypt and pass the values to our application. The first, execenv, will inject the decrypted values into the application's environment, where they can be read as environment variables. We'll update our Docker file to copy the encrypted config file, and then change our entry point to use execenv. In our application script, we'll get rid of the SOPS version and print each of the variables from the config file. We'll add a new file called aws.env. This will contain the AWS credentials that we'll pass to SOPS to allow it to use the KMS key to decrypt the file contents. We'll build the image again and pass our AWS variables via the env file flag. We can see the original values from our config file decrypted without us having to specify any keys and without the decrypted values being written to disk. execenv can only be used with flat files. If we have a file with a complex structure, we get an error when trying to pass it to our application. If we want to use a structured file like this, we need to use the second command, execfile. This behaves similarly to execenv, 
except it injects the entire decrypted file into the child process. We'll update the entry point to use exec file and change our application script to output the file contents. If we build and run this version, we'll see the entire file being printed. For the rest of this video, we'll use execenv, so we'll use the version of the Docker file and application from that example. When using SOPs to start your application this way, there are a few things you should do to keep your secrets as secure as possible. Have the encrypted file owned and only readable by the root user. Run your application as a non-root user, which you should already be doing anyway. And use SOPs feature of privilege dropping to run the application as a user with lower permissions. Let's look at how to do this. We'll start by changing the permissions of the encrypted configuration file so it's only readable by the owner. We'll then create a new user called MyApp and tell SOPs to run the application process as this user. In our application script, we'll print out the current user as well as the details of the encrypted file. If we build the new image and run a container from it, we'll see that the current user is MyApp and the encrypted file is owned by the root user and only readable by the owner. This is a useful security measure since it prevents anyone accessing the secrets file in the container via a vulnerability in the application, since the application doesn't have permission to read the file. There's another security problem to solve, which we'll illustrate by changing our application script to print the environment. If we build and run our container, we can see our AWS credentials. These are needed by SOPs, but not by the application, and SOPs forwards the entire host environment to the child process. We can prevent this by passing the pristine flag to SOPs, which makes it only pass the contents of the file to the process. Earlier, when we created our encrypted file, we specified the KMS key as an argument. SOPs makes it easy to predefine the encryption credentials, so they don't need to be specified when creating files. We'll create a new file called .sops.yaml in which we'll create a root node called creation rules, which is an array of items. For each item in the array, we'll specify a path regex and a KMS ARN, which will encrypt files in the path. We'll specify a final KMS ARN without a path regex at the bottom as a catch-all. We can now encrypt a new configuration file using SOPS edit, change one of the placeholder values and save the file. For the edit command to work, you need to have your editor variable set. If we take a look inside it, we can see SOPS has encrypted it as before. If we use YQ to parse both YAML files and compare the KMS ARNs, we can see this file was encrypted using the key from our dev creation rule. This makes it easy to split each environment's config into multiple files. For example, if we want to decrypt the config for one component, say the internal database, without decrypting the config for external APIs. Earlier, we saw there was an option to choose certain keys in our file to remain unencrypted. This is one of several options for only encrypting part of a file. The first is to define a suffix that we append to keys, either to leave them unencrypted when the rest of the file is encrypted, or to encrypt them when the rest of the file is unencrypted. The unencrypted suffix is the default option. The second method is to define a regular expression to match keys instead of a suffix. And finally, we can define a regex to match comments that precede affected keys. All six of these flags can also be defined in the creation rules in our SOPS configuration file, and all six of these flags are mutually exclusive. We can only use one at a time with any given encrypted file, and attempting to use more than one will result in an error. Let's look at how each of these three methods works, starting with the key suffix. Let's edit our encrypted database config file using SOPS, and add underscore unencrypted to the end of the non-sensitive keys. When we look back at our encrypted file, we'll see only the password has been encrypted. If we encrypted our config file with an encrypted suffix, none of the values from the original config file would have been encrypted. If we edit the file and add the suffix to the end of the database password key, we'll see this value being encrypted while the others remain unencrypted. We can achieve the same result without modifying the keys by using the unencrypted regex to match all keys we don't want to encrypt. And the same result again using the encrypted regex to match the keys we do want to encrypt. Finally, we'll look at the comment regexes. These work by adding some comments to our unencrypted config file. Above each key we want to leave unencrypted, we'll add a comment saying sop colon decrypt. 
SOPS encrypts comments by default, so we'll tell it to not encrypt one while allowing it to encrypt another. We'll define our regex in the SOPS configuration file to demonstrate how that works. When we encrypt the file, we don't have to specify any options since they're already in the creation rules. Only our password and the comment above it have been encrypted, while the top comment and the other keys remain unencrypted. The encrypted regex comment works the same in reverse. We mark the keys and comments we want to encrypt and leave the others blank. We achieve the same result as with the unencrypted regex comment. All of these methods apply not only to the matched node, but to all child nodes beneath it. All of these methods, the comment regex is my preferred choice. It doesn't require changing the keys as the suffix does. It doesn't get more complex and difficult to read as the file grows, as a key regex might. It gives instant feedback on which values will be encrypted by looking at line above, which the key regex only does after encryption, and is the only method that allows us to control comment encryption. SOPS has the ability to read and write individual values without opening the file in an editor. We'll return to our database config file to demonstrate this. If we want to read just the database username, we pass the extract flag to the decrypt subcommand with a key address as the argument. If our config file was structured, then we specify each key in the tree in its own square brackets. If we want to change a value on the command line, we use the set subcommand, specify the key the same as when extracting, and include a value. We now see the updated value in our config file. As well as changing existing values, we can use set to add new ones to the file. Finally, we can remove values from the file with the unset subcommand. If we make a change to our config file, the git diff shows us the encrypted changes. It's possible for git diff to show the values unencrypted while keeping the file encrypted on disk. To do this, we create a git attributes file that tells git to use a sops differ when diffing encrypted files. And we'll define our sops differ to be sops decrypt. If we run git diff again, we can now see our database username change in clear text. By default, SOPS writes changes to standard out unless we use the in place flag or redirect to a file. We can use this behaviour when using SOPS in a script or other program to take input on standard in and send it to standard out without the unencrypted content ever being written to disk. SOPS normally uses the file extension to determine the input and output type, but since we don't have a file this time, we need to specify both ourselves. Now we've covered the day to day workflow of using SOPS. Let's look at some advanced features and workflows. Key groups allow us to split data key into two or more parts and encrypt the fragments with different master keys. I'll illustrate this by adding a group to our encrypted file with the fingerprint of a GPG key. If we now look at our encrypted file, the main difference to notice is the list of keys has now become a list of key groups. Each key in the group still has an ink field, only this time it's only a fragment of the full key. In order to retrieve the full data key, a fragment from each key group must be successfully decrypted. Splitting the data key like this offers additional security since the breach of one key service won't give a threat actor access to the full data key. SOPS has the ability to store a log of all interactions with the encrypted file in a Postgres database so you can audit them later. We'll copy the database initialization statements from the SOPS repo on GitHub and place them in a file inside a Postgres directory in our working directory. We'll then create a Docker Compose file with our SOPS demo container and a Postgres container as services. We'll mount our Postgres directory at a special location in the Postgres container that will run all scripts and migrations inside when the database is first started. We'll define a health check on our data container and make our SOPS container dependent on the database being healthy. We'll set the usual AWS environment variables on the SOPS container and some Postgres variables on the database container. Finally, we'll add a build statement to our SOPS demo so we can use Docker Compose to build the updated image. Now we create a file to specify the backend for SOPS to store these events and add this to our image. After building our new SOPS image, we run Docker Compose up before seeing our decrypted configuration at the end. Leave this running and open a new terminal to query the audit events table in the database. We can run SOPS in a client server mode 
allowing us to run a key service on another machine so our application machine doesn't need access to master keys. We'll create two Docker files based on BusyBox. We'll populate the client Docker file with the one we used in the execenv example, and we'll downgrade the version of SOPS we're using. At the time of recording this video, the external key service was broken in the upgrade from 3.9 to 3.10. We'll move the installation of the TLS root certificates into the key service docker file, as well as installing SOPs. We'll disable the local key service in the client and specify the address of the remote key service. In our key service entry point, we'll start the key service and tell it to listen on all network interfaces on port 5000. We'll now create a docker compose file, specify the docker file for the build, make the client dependent on the key service, and pass the AWS environment variables to the key service. To prove to ourselves that the remote key service is working, we'll comment out the key service and build the client on its own. When we do, we see an RPC transport error when the client attempts to contact the key service. If we now uncomment the key service and run Docker Compose again, we see our decrypted configuration. The master keys used to encrypt the data key aren't set in stone. We can add and remove them from our encrypted file in two different ways. The first is to edit the keys in sops.yaml file. Sops handles multiple keys as a comma separated list, and we'll use some YAML syntax to split this list over multiple lines for readability. If we then run sops with the update keys subcommand and use git to see what's changed, we'll see our new key has been added to our encrypted file. The existing data key has been re encrypted while remaining unchanged because we changed the KMS configuration in our sops.yaml. The second method is to use the rotate command with optional flags for adding and removing master keys. We'll start by running sops rotate with the in place flag to generate a new data key. This key will be used to re-encrypt the entire file before being encrypted with the existing master key. Without the in place flag, the encrypted file would be written to a standard out. Next, we'll use rotate with the add KMS flag to add a new KMS key and see this rotated the data key while adding the second KMS key. Finally, we'll rotate again using the RM KMS flag to remove the key we just added and a git diff shows us with a single KMS key in our encrypted file. Thanks for watching this overview of SOPS. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you're hearing this, please consider liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, or some combination of all of those to show YouTube this is a video worth recommending to others. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.